Hello everyone, welcome to Big Data Thoughts. Today I'm going to talk about two data types which are date and timestamp in Spark. And uh, when developers write code, the, there are many different data types that Spark supports, but these are the two which cause problems or which, is, which are difficult to understand by the developers. So today we'll do a deep dive into both of these. I would talk about what it means, like what is a date um, data type, what is a timestamp data type, how are they internally stored by Spark, uh, how does Spark uh, interpret these kind of data types and we would also talk about what are the changes that have been made between the earlier versions of Spark and the Spark 3.0 with respect to these data types. Also, uh, I would talk about when you do a uh, version upgrade from the earlier version to Spark 3.0 and above, what kind of difficulties would you face and what is the solution to that? So let's get started. What is the date data type? Now when we get data from any source, there may be date fields. How do you represent those in Spark? So for that we have a date data type, which primarily would have three fields, year, month and day. Now, when we use a date data type, Spark has to check whether the date is valid or not. So there are some constraints that need to be applied. For example, the year can be only in a certain range. Month can be only between 1 to 12. Similarly, day can be either between 1 to 31 or 30 or 28 or 29, depending on whether it's a leap year or not. So these kind of constraints need to be enforced by Spark. How would that happen? So for that, we have something called a calendar. So there is always a calendar associated, which helps Spark to apply these constraints. So there are different types of calendars. I'll briefly talk about those and then I'll tell you what Spark uses. So first of all, the very, very primitive calendar was lunar calendar, which was uh, given by Romans and that was based on moon. So it wasn't that accurate. So later came Julian calendar given by Julius Caesar, which was a solar calendar and much more accurate than the lunar one. And this was used for um, in many languages. But then there was one more calendar which was better than the Julian, we can say, which was Gregorian calendar, which came in and that became, became a standard. After Gregorian, there was a calendar which was introduced called proleptic Gregorian. So now when we talk about Gregorian calendar, Gregorian calendar can support dates beyond 1582. To be precise, 15th October 1582. So if we had to represent dates which were before this 1582, then Julian calendar had to be used. So initially, uh, the calendar which was getting used was hybrid calendar, which was a combination of Julian and Gregorian to support dates uh, uh, previous to 1582 and after 1582. But then later on proleptic Gregorian came in which was uh, supporting all the dates. So there was no two calendars required. You could just use proleptic and it would support all the years and dates. So that's how the calendars evolved. Now if we look at how Spark uh, uh, supports these. So before that, let's let's just talk about the timestamp data type as well and then go into Spark's internal representation and how it uses calendars. So timestamp will contain these three fields that date had year, month and day. But in addition to that, we will also have hour, minute and second. Plus, we would have something called a time zone because now we are talking about the instance of time in a specific time zone based on your geography. So date would be simply year, month, day and timestamp would be year, month, day and the aspect of time comes in which is hour, minute, seconds along with time zone. So this is an example of timestamp. Now when we talk, we spoke about date and timestamp but now we need to look at how Spark used the calendars because when you use timestamp also you have to have those constraints and you have to check it against a calendar. So if we look at all the versions which were before 3.0, uh, Spark was using the hybrid calendar which is Julian plus Gregorian and the API that Spark was using was Java 7 time API. This had one limitation, one is that you had to use both calendars together Julian and Gregorian to support dates beyond and previous to 1582 but in this calendar the dates between 
4th of October 1582 to 15th of October 1582 does not exist. They cannot be supported. And Spark 3.0 does a rebasing or a backward compatibility. Now, when Spark 3.0 came in, uh, it had a different calendar. So that's why there had to be a backward compatibility that had to be supported by Spark. With Spark 3.0, what calendar are we using? We are using proleptic Gregorian calendar, which is a single calendar which can support all the dates and years. And there is a change in API as well. This calendar here we are operating on Java 8 time API. It conforms to ISO. The only limitation here is there is one single date that does not exist, which is 29th of February 1000, because according to proleptic Gregorian, that's not a leap year. So that's the only limitation. But this is a standard now used across in the industry by either PostgreSQL, MySQL or Python. All of them use a proleptic Gregorian calendar. Now let us talk about how Spark internally stores any date or a timestamp. So it never Spark never stores the date or timestamp like a year, date, month because that's not convenient to store. So what it does is it considers a date which is 1st of January 1970 and that's known as the epoch. So if you see uh, if I look at epoch date it is 1st of January 1970, epoch timestamp is 1st of January 1917, hour 0, minute 0 and second 0. So what Spark does is whatever date we are capturing as a date or a timestamp, Spark converts it into an integer. So if I want to store 24th of May 2021, it will be stored as an integer. And what is that integer? That integer is the time elapsed from the epoch, the number of days. So 24th of May 2021, how many number of days is it apart from 1st of January 1970? That integer is getting stored here uh, as the date and now uh, what happens is this date can if it is positive that means the date is after 1970 first Jan if it is negative that means it is a date which is before 1970. So we spoke about how Spark is storing the date information now let us look at what does it do with the time zone because when we talk about a timestamp we have a component called time zone as well. So let us bifurcate the timestamp component into two one is the time instance which means that uh, whatever is the year, date and time, the year, date, month and time captured that is a time instance that is simple to store as an integer. The second component is the zone. So by default Spark stores everything as an integer and it assumes that the time zone is UTC. So what will happen is when that data is actually read using either PySpark or Scala or Java that is when the time zone is determined. How, how does it determine the time zone? So there is something called a time zone offset that needs to get calculated. Now what does that mean? A time zone offset is nothing but it's an offset from the UTC. So since Spark's default time zone is UTC, the time zone offset would be if I want to convert into EST or PST, the difference between UTC and PST or UTC and ETC is EST is the time zone offset that needs to be added or subtracted to UTC to get the actual time. So what will happen is when the data is getting transferred from the executor to the driver and it is getting read, that is when if we are using PySpark, what, what will happen is in the Python date time object which is there, there is a conversion in the system time zone. So whatever is the local time zone of the driver, that will become the time zone and accordingly the time will be converted. If we are using Scala and Java, then what will happen is wherever the driver is running, the local time zone of the JVM will be used and accordingly the time would be or date would be uh, the, the time would be converted. Now that is the default behavior, but when we create a date, there are ways in which we can specify the time zone, we can specify uh, what we want to convert it into. Now I hope this is clear, so then we will move on to one more important uh, aspect which is the changes that have happened from Spark earlier versions to Spark 3.0.
Now, if you were operating on an earlier version and you do a version upgrade, you may see certain errors in terms of how the date and the timestamp are getting rendered. So, I will talk about the error and how to resolve it because that is important when you do a version upgrade. So, what will happen like I told earlier versions were using a different calendar and an API and now we are using a different calendar and API that is the reason we are getting these errors. So, Spark has a property that they have introduced in Spark 3 which is called Spark SQL Legacy Time Parser Policy. This property can have three values exception, legacy or corrected. By default it is exception. So, I will talk about what each of these are but we need to understand that this property tells Spark how to handle the changes in the dates and timestamp with the version. So, if it is state uh, set to exception which is by default which means if we are now we have upgraded and now we are trying to read and write our data using Spark 3 and above. So, what will happen if Spark gets any date which is uh, from the so you use the previous version to write data and now you are using Spark 3. So, if Spark gets any issue while reading the date which was written using previous version of Spark it will throw an exception and the exception would be something like what is there on the screen. Let us look at what are the two other properties that can be set because we definitely do not want to just have an exception we want to fix it. So, the two other ways to fix it is we set the property to be uh, uh, to correct it which means if the date time values that we have and we are sure that whatever files we have written will only be read by spark 3.0 and higher then uh, what we will do we will keep the mode as corrected because it will just write the values as is it will not do any rebasing. So, this has to be used only when we are sure that we are going to read only using higher versions. If we are not sure that we will be using higher versions or we will be using lower versions then the property to be used or on the safer side we can say the property to be used is legacy which means what spark will do it it will rebase all the date time values with respect to the calendar difference because earlier it was Julian plus Gregorian now it is prolectic Gregorian. So, spark will internally rebase all the date and time so that you have interoperability you do not need to worry about how you are going to read your data using previous version or using new version. Then there is a third property that have to has to be set which is spark SQL date time Java 8 API enabled because in spark 3 we are using this Java 8 API the way we are capturing the date and timestamp is different. So, this property also needs to be enabled even though you are using uh, PySpark or Scala or Java because internally this API is getting called by Spark. So, to summarize this whenever there is a version upgrade these properties need to be set to ensure that our upgrade is seamless and it is properly handling the date and the timestamp data types. Now that is all for today. Uh, today we learnt about what are the data types date and timestamp, how they are uh, getting stored by Spark internally, how does Spark read and write these, what are the calendars which are getting used, what is the difference between both the versions and how to handle the version upgrade. I hope this was useful and this will help you when you do your upgrades. That is all for today. Please like, subscribe and comment on the uh, video and let me know what else is interesting that you would like to see and I will be happy to uh, do a video on that. Thank you so much.